you have come to the right place and I encourage you to stay until the end because I have a very useful topic to talk about. Let me begin by stating the case of Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones is a patient who presented with what seemed like a persistent wound infection. She has a history of excision biopsy in her right axilla resulting to a non-resolving wound with wound infection. Standard treatment were initiated including antibiotic therapy but despite best efforts the wound just wasn't healing as anticipated. Mrs. Jones was then referred to wound care for further assessment and management. Upon closer examination it became evident that uh, what we were dealing was uh, dealing with wasn't a typical wound infection. Instead Mrs. Jones had intertrigo or Sometimes we pronounce it as intertrigo, also known as intertiginous dermatitis, condition that uh, often mistaken due to overlapping symptoms. In the world of wound care, it is not uncommon for intertrigo to masquerade as a wound infection, leading to ineffective treatments and delayed wound healing. As a rule of thumb, effective treatment of a wound includes treatment of the perioon or the area around it. Join me as we explore the pathophysiology of intertrigo and enhance awareness that it mimics as a wound infection when present around it. And it could lead to improper treatment and delayed healing of the wound at hand. In this discussion, I will teach you how to recognize, assess, and treat this condition. There are two parts of this presentation. I encourage you to watch both of them, and I promise you, you are not going to waste your time. Whether you are a healthcare professional involved, involved directly or indirectly in wound management, or you are a patient, family, or you're a general public uh, watching me, this video, video is your guide. Remember that this is not a medical advice and do not do anything or change your medical regimen without consulting with your provider. Subscribe, engage, and let's uncover the truth behind cases mistaken for wound infection but are in fact grappling with the open and recognized intertrigo. Let's dive in. What is intertrigo? Intertrigo is a skin condition characterized by inflammation occurring in skin folds, often due to friction, heat, and moisture. It is frequently worsened by infection which commonly with candida, but bacterial, viral, or other fungal infections may also occur. It usually happens in the perineum, axilla, inframammary creases, abdominal folds, neck creases, interdigital areas, and I usually see this in the skin folds and skin creases of patients with limb edema. The pathophysiology involves several key factors, but in a nutshell, it develops from mechanical factors that could lead to secondary infection. Heat and macerations are central to the process. Opposing skin surface rub against its other, at times causing erosion that becomes inflamed. Sweat, feces, urine, and vaginal discharge may aggravate intertrigo in both adults and infants. For an intertrigo to develop, the following plays a role is skin friction, moisture, inflammation, microbial infection, maceration, and skin barrier dysfunction. Friction between opposing skin surfaces such as in body folds uh, lead to irritation and breakdown of the protective outer layer of the skin which is the epidermis. So the sweat and other bodily 
secretions accumulate in skin folds, creating a warm and moist environment. This promotes the growth of microorganisms like bacteria and fungi. So <clears throat> the warm and moist conditions and skin folds provide an ideal breeding ground for bacteria and, and uh, fungi. Infections, particularly by candida, which is a yeast or bacteria, commonly contribute to the aggravation of the intertrigo. Microbial overgrowth triggers an inflammatory response from the body. So this involves the release of inflammatory mediators leading to redness, swelling, and discomfort in the affected skin areas. Let's talk about maceration. Prolonged exposure to moisture, exposure to moisture can uh, lead to maceration, which is the softening and breakdown of the skin. This further exacerbates susceptibility to infection and inflammation. Continuous irritation and inflammation compromise the skin integrity of the skin barrier. So this makes the affected area more prone to further damage and microbial invasion. Ladies and gentle gentlemen, when you are evaluating or assessing a chronic wound, you should uh, uh, distinguish if the erythema around the wound is coming from an infection or inflammatory response from a wound itself or coming from an intertrigo. If you have a redness in a skin fold, say for example in your patients with lymphedema or any or say any redness in the groin, armpit or any erythema around or anywhere in the body or where one skin constantly come in contact with another skin and one side of redness is a mirror image of the redness in the other side, chances are the redness is due to intertrigo and the wound it's in the wound itself or an intertrigo alone. I would say that in my experience I could not heal the wound without treating the intertrigo around it. Remember that in wound management we are not only treating the wound itself but also the environment around the wound. What are the symptoms of intertrigo? Patients typically experience redness, itching, burning, and sometimes pain in the affected skin folds. The rash may exhibit a well-defined border and may be moist due to exudates if the wound is already infected or the intertrigo or the skin itself is already infected. Sometimes intertrigo is under-recognized and under-diagnosed. Patients referred to wound care sometimes have this condition but nothing in the chart that takes or talks about it. Upon evaluation, there is if there is somewhat symmetrical redness or reddish-brown rash with small bumps in one area where a skin rub against itself, you should suspect that uh, the patient or the skin is manifesting uh, or experiencing this condition. We call it intertrigo. Although intertrigo is a common conditions, it, condition, it is difficult to diagnose. Why? Because it mimics other uh, conditions like psoriasis, acute uh, uh, contact dermatitis. What else? Uh, scabies, metabolic diseases, or, or even malignancies, and of course, wound infection itself. How do we treat intertrigo? If you're a patient watching this and you suspect that you may have this condition, the first advice that I can tell you is to schedule your next visit to your healthcare providers so that uh, they may be able to diagnose this condition and give you a specific advice on how to treat it. However, I, based upon the pathophysiology of the condition that we just talked about, I can give you some tips. And which I would summarize by saying, keep that skin dry, clean, and cool. Dry yourself thoroughly with a clean towel after you take a shower. Pat it dry. 
Dunatrob. Use a mild antiperspirant or deodorant in your armpits or under your breast if you're a female to minimize uh, sweating. Use a fan or a dryer. Let's say uh, you can set it on the cool setting and aim it on the affected uh, <clears throat> area multiple times during the day. You have to wear loose clothing and breathable fabrics such as cotton. You may use a powder drying agent such as talcum powder. However, there are some authorities um, who are against uh, the use of powder in intertrigo because uh, they think that it may just exacerbate the irritation. However, if you have to use a powder, do not use it with ointment at the same time because they will create what we call the tacky paste. If you're a patient watching this and if you think that like what I said you may have an intertrigo, try the above tips that I just enumerated and uh, when you see your provider, they may be able to prescribe a cream or ointment that reduce friction between your affected skin, maybe a topical uh, steroid creams or antifungal or antibacterial cream. It all depends if they suspect that your intertrigo is already infected. So as a rule of thumb, do not self-treat if you don't have to. By the way, I'm gonna end or cut this video right now because uh, I want you to take a break. However, you must click the next video because we'll be talking about a specific treatment for these conditions. See you there. If you're new in this channel, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. God bless.